Yeah. All right. Now I can officially open this up and um, just want to start again by thanking everybody, um, especially Manuja Gupta from uh, CRA that's going to help us learn about all the benefits um, that CRA offers to people with disabilities. So excited about that. Uh, tips and tricks and tools that they might have. But now I'll pass it over to Manuja. Manuja, thank you so much. Um, and we'll let you take it away. Um, thank you everyone uh, for joining me today and um, spending your afternoon with me. I'm hoping that I'm able to share information with you that you weren't previously aware about. I'm going to be talking about the benefits and credits with you. I am an outreach officer with the Canada Revenue Agency, so I do have some information um, in regards to the benefits and credits. And I will also be answering any questions that you may have. So um, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat during the course of the presentation. And at the end, um, I'll be answering any questions that you may have. Sorry, I'm just trying to, there we go. So here are the topics that we'll cover today. I want to start by giving you an overview of the disability tax credit. Next, I'll touch on the child disability benefit, the Canada workers benefit disability supplement, the Canada caregiver credit, medical expenses, the registered disabilities savings plan, and the Canada caregiver credit. Um, I'm also going to explain the GST HST credit, the additional one-time GST payment that went down on November 4th. You may have already received it, but I'll just touch on it a little bit. The Canada dental benefit and one-time top-up to the housing benefit. And also give you some pointers on how to avoid scams, um, where to find free tax help, uh, and just some CRA services and tools. Um, so just to let you know, for over the course of the presentation, I'll be referring to the Canada Revenue Agency as the CRA. The first credit that I'll be talking about is the disability tax credit. In Canada, we recognize that persons with disabilities face many barriers, including additional expenses. The purpose of the DTC is to provide some relief for unavoidable additional expenses that result from living with a disability. This helps offset costs that other taxpayers don't have to face. The disability tax credit, DTC for short, helps persons with disabilities or the family members that support them to reduce the amount of income tax that they may have to pay. So you will not receive money back like you would with CCB, which is the Canada Child Benefit. It just simply reduces any amount that you owe uh, for you or your supporting family member. A supporting family member can be a spouse or a common law partner, parent, grandparent, child, or another family member of the person with a disability. If you are eligible for the DTC and you are 18 years or older, the amount that you can claim on your 2022 tax return is 8,870. So this amount may vary from year to year, but the amount that you see on your screen is for the 2022 tax year that you'll be filing this year. If you're eligible for the DTC and we're under the age of 18 at the end of the year, uh, or if you're the parent of a child who is under 18, and is eligible for the DTC, you can claim an additional $5,174 um, on the tax return. Being eligible for the DTC can open the door and act as a gatekeeper to other federal, provincial, and territorial programs, such as the Registered Disabilities Savings Plan, the Canada Workers Benefit Disability Supplement, and the Child Disability Benefit. This makes it important to apply for the DTC, even if you have low income or no income. So you can qualify for other disability related programs, benefits and plans. You cannot access these critical programs without first qualifying for the DTC with the CRA. Please note that the provincial and territorial uh, disability amounts and tax credit rates vary among provinces and territories. So the amounts that you see on your screen are the federal amounts. You will, if you're eligible for DTC, you will also qualify for the provincial and territorial amounts as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I talked about the RDSP uh, in this that you, uh, that you can benefit from. I'll be talking about the RDSP later in the slideshow um, to let you know about the benefits of applying even if you have no income or low income. So when we talk about eligibility, it's important to note that eligibility for the disability tax credit 
is based on the effects of the impairment, not on the medical condition itself. So for example, let's say the two people have the same medical condition and they both have a walking impairment. Over the same distance, one can walk at a reasonable pace while the other needs a walker and must stop frequently to rest. Although these two people have the same medical condition, the effects are different. So a medical practitioner has to certify that you have a severe and prolonged impairment and tell us the effects of that impairment. The eligibility for the DTC is based on the information that the medical practitioner provides. Your medical practitioner must also tell us the year that your activities became markedly restricted. We'll explain that term later in the presentation. Please also note that you may not be eligible for the DTC even if you receive the Canada Pension Plan or Quebec Pension Plan disability benefits, worker compensation benefits, or other types of disability uh, or insurance benefits. These programs have other purposes and different criteria. The only way to find out that if you're eligible uh, for the disability tax credit with the CRA is to fill out and submit the form P2201, which is the Disability Tax Credit Certificate. And um, part of it is filled out by you, but most of it is completed by the medical doctor. So the eligibility of the DTC falls under the following categories, those being vision, speaking, hearing, walking, eliminating, feeding, dressing, mental functions necessary for everyday life, cumulative effect of significant limitations, and life-sustaining therapy. So here are some terms that we use uh, when discussing the DTC. So markedly restricted means an individual may be eligible if they have an impairment in physical or mental functions that is severe and prolonged, resulting in a marked restriction. A marked restriction means that even with appropriate therapy, devices, and medication, the individual is unable or takes an inordinate amount of time to perform activities or functions in one of the impairment categories. And, and that this is the case all or substantially all of the time. So the medical practitioner must also tell us the year that you met the eligibility criteria. So this is not necessarily the date the medical practitioner made the diagnosis, but rather when you began to experience marked restrictions in your abilities. So life-sustaining therapy. The criteria for life-sustaining therapy is met when therapy is needed to support a vital function at least two times per week for an average of at least 14 hours a week. This is true even if the therapy eases the symptoms. You must also have to dedicate time for the therapy. That is, you have to take time away from your normal everyday activities to receive it. This time includes the time you need to set up a portable device. And lastly, the cumulative effect of significant limitations. So to be eligible for DTC under this category, you must have limitations in two or more categories with the exception of life-sustaining therapy. These limitations must exist together all or substantially all of the time and have a combined impact that is equivalent to being unable or taking an inordinate amount of time in one category or present all or substantially all of the time, even with appropriate therapy, devices, and medication. Please note, when we say all or substantially all of the time, it generally means 90% or more of the time. So how do you apply for the DTC? There are two ways to apply. The first is by manually filling out the paper form T2201, which can be found on our website. Um, first, you fill out the section A of part uh, section of part A that applies to you. And if you want us to adjust your tax return, make sure you indicate that in question through your part A, and we'll automatically adjust your taxes for you instead of you having to submit another form with it. Then you take the form to a medical practitioner who completes part B of the form. And then after they have completed the form and signed it, you uh, submit that form in two ways. Either you can mail a copy to us, or you can, if you have a CRA My Account, you can submit it electronically using uh, My Account. Um, and always please keep a copy of your uh, copy of the form for your records. The second is the digital application. So if you go to the link that's on the screen, Canada.ca/dtc-digital-application, 
So if you go there, the medical practitioner will be, be able to fill out the form electronically by answering questions. Once that form is completed, it will generate a PDF for them. They will just print out that PDF, sign it, then you fill out part A of that form. And again, the submitting of that form is the same. Either you mail it to us or either you submit it through the CRA My Account. So medical doctors and nurse practitioners can certify all sections of the form T2201. Other medical practitioners can also fill out part B of your form, but they can only certify the following impairments. So for an example, an optometrist will only be able to validate the vision portion of that form. So please note that the CRA never charges a fee to process the form T2201. However, your medical practitioner may charge you. You're responsible for paying any fees that they charge you to fill out that form. However, you may be able to claim that fee as a medical expense on your return. So once the CRA receives your application, they will uh, review the information you provide to determine your eligibility. Once the CRA completes the review, they will then send you a notice of determination. If the CRA determines that you're eligible for DTC, you can claim the disability amount on your income tax return. If you were eligible for the okay. DTC previous years but didn't claim the disability amount on your tax return, you can ask for adjustments to your tax return for up to nine previous years. So you, after this presentation, you determine, oh, I could have applied for this like five years ago. You can still apply and we will pay back the disability amount for nine previous years. To claim the disability amount for past years, you just need to tick the sec uh, box in section three of part A of that form when you apply and make sure you sign at the bottom of the page. As we discussed, the eligibility of the DTC is based not only on the medical condition, but also on the effects of the impairment. You can track the progress of your applications by logging into your CRA My Account. If your application is denied, you can ask for us to review your file if you disagree with their decision or if your medical condition changes. Be sure to send um, or include any relevant medical information that you have not already sent before and make sure uh, you request for a re review within one year of the date of your notice of determination. Otherwise, you will have to send us a new form T2201. So the child disability benefit is a tax-free payment made to families who care for children under the age of 18 and who is eligible for the disability tax credit. Um, so again, the child will be eligible for the disability tax credit when the CRA has an approved form T2201 on which a medical practitioner has certified that the child has a severe and prolonged impairment in physical or mental functions that affect their ability to perform or one or more of the basic activities of daily living. The child disability benefit is paid monthly with the Canada Child Benefit to the person who received the CCB for that child. So this is a monthly payment um, for them and it's just added on to the C uh, Canada Child Benefit. And this is just an example to show you for the period of July 2022 to June 2023, um, you can get $2,985 per year. Um, and that, that's the amount that you can get per dependent, so per child um, and based on the net income of 2021. So you may be eligible for the Canada's Workers' Benefit Disability Supplement if you're eligible for the disability tax credit. So for the 2022 tax year, the maximum amount of disability supplement for an individual is $737, and for the families, it's $734. Um, the maximum amount for disability supplement will vary uh, for residents of Alberta, Nunavut, and Quebec. They have different ca categories, but the amounts that here that you see on your screen are appropriate for all other provinces. So if you're eligible for the Canada Workers Benefit, uh, that just means that you have working income, um, then you would, uh, and you have a disability tax credit with it, then you, this is the additional amount that you get to the base amount. So do you support a spouse or common law partner or a dependent with physical or mental impairment? The Canada Care Group Caregiver credit is a non-refundable tax credit that may be available to you. 
So what do I mean by a non-refundable tax credit? Um, it just means that it's going to reduce your tax payable to zero dollars. It's not going to give you anything extra as a refund back, but it will ensure that you don't have to pay any taxes uh, or it will maximize that amount there. So for the Canada Caregiver Credit, the dependent must be either your spouse or common law partner or your spouse or common law partner's child, grandchild, parent, grandparent, sibling, um, aunt, uncle, niece, or nephew dependent on you for support because of their physical or mental impairment and are a resident in Canada at any time in the year. You cannot claim this amount for the person who's only visiting you. So an individual is considered to depend on you for support if they rely on you to regularly and consistently provide them with some or all uh, of the basic necessities of life, such as food, shelter, and clothing. So you may be able to claim the Canada Caregiver Credit for more than one person if each one of them meet the related uh, above conditions. So you can claim it for multiple people. Uh, for the Canada Caregiver Credit, you don't necessarily need to have disability tax credit approved on file. Um, you can even get a letter from a medical practitioner saying that this person uh, requires support or is dependent on you. And uh, you can still claim the Canada Caregiver Credit for them. Uh, if you have a disability tax credit, then you don't need another letter from the doctor. Um, so it's either or. So for each dependent that you claim, you need to provide the details on Schedule 5 of the tax return, which is Schedule 5 is amounts for spouse for common law partners and dependents. If you're filling your tax return electronically, the, uh, the software will just prompt you to answer questions and it will fill it up for you. But if you are uh, sending in a paper tax return, then make sure that you attach Schedule 5 for each dependent that you're claiming. Um, just for a reference, some of the line number, each line, depending on who you're claiming as a dependent, whether that's like your spouse or common law partner or your child or your grandchild or aunt, whoever you're claiming, it will fall under different line numbers on that schedule. And Schedule 5 is a great way to tell you which line to report it on. But for reference, uh, they would be line 30300 or 30400 or 30425. So one of the three um, lines, it would be depending on the dependent, that, uh, how they're related to you. So the next um, uh, credit that you can claim on your tax return is medical expenses. It is also a non-refundable tax credit. It is designed to provide tax relief for individuals with significant medical expenses for themselves and certain dependents. There's a long list of medical expenses that you can claim, but some of the most common eligible expenses include prescription drugs, medical supplies, some dental services, attendant care. Some expenses require a prescription certification or a completed form. Uh, the completed form T2201, which is a disability tax credit. So more of the most of the medical expenses like prescription drugs or dental services, you do not need a disability tax credit to be able to claim them. However, if you're trying to claim attendant care expenses on your tax return, then you would need a disability tax credit in order to claim that on your tax return. So you may have already been reimbursed for part of a medical expense. If so, on your income tax and benefit return, you can only claim the part that you have not been reimbursed for. So as, in, as an example, if you paid $80 for a prescription and your insurance plan reimbursed you $60 on your return, then you can only claim 20% of the expense. So in expenses that are out-of-pocket expenses. You may claim eligible medical expenses that you or your spouse or common law partner paid for yourself, your spouse or common law partner, or your or your spouse or common law partner's children who are under the age of 18 at the end of the year. So uh, for you and your spouse or common law partner, you can claim the expenses either on your return or your partner's return if they were paid for any of the three that, that's listed there. Um, whatever maximizes your benefit for your tax return, you can claim either or. You may claim eligible medical expenses that you or your spouse or common law partner pay for any of the following persons who dependent on you for support. So you can, you or your spouse or common law partner's children who are over the age of 18 at the end of the year or your grandchildren or your, or your spouse common law partner's parents, grandparents, brothers, sister, aunts, uncles, nieces, or nephews who were residents of Canada at any time in the year. 
So even if you're paying medical expenses for someone else, you can still claim them on your tax return as long as you have documentation proving that you paid for their expenses. So attendant care is when someone does personal tasks for a person who cannot do them for themselves. This can include care in certain facilities. You may claim amounts paid for attendant care if the attendant was not your spouse or common law partner, and if the attendant was 18 years of age or older when the amounts were paid. If you hire an attendant uh, privately, so for example, not through like some sort of an agency, the attendant will probably be considered an employee of yours. Generally, you can claim the entire amount that you paid for a care at nursing homes, which is full-time care, and at schools, institutions, or other places that provide care, uh, care or care and training. Other places could include outpatient clinics, such as detoxification clinics. Um, however, other places do not include recreational facilities or residential summer camps, even if these places cater to persons with disabilities. The CRA considers care to be full-time when a person needs constant care and attendance. It's important to note that in general, you cannot claim the entire amount that you paid for a retirement home or home for seniors. Um, however, you can claim salaries and wages for care in such facilities if the care recipient qualifies for the disability tax credit. So any expenses related to attendant care can be claimed on your tax return as long as you have an approved disability tax credit with the CRA. So you can also claim transportation and travel expenses if all of the following conditions are met. So substantially equivalent medical services were not available near your home. The traveling route that you took was reasonably direct. Under the circumstances, the, reason, uh, the reasonable for you to have traveled to that place to get medical services. So for example, um, say that you live in Kelowna and you are traveling to Vancouver to uh, receive medical services because Kelowna Hospital or Kelowna Doctors don't provide that particular service. And if you're traveling to Vancouver, that travel expense can be claimed on your tax return as a medical expense. So travel, expense, uh, travel expenses cannot be claimed as a medical expense if you traveled less than 40 kilometers one way from your home to get medical services. So in our, in our example of going from Kelowna to Vancouver, it would definitely be more than 40 kilometers one way. That means you would qualify. If you had to travel uh, at least 40 kilometers one, bay, one way, but less than 80 kilometers from your home to get medical services, uh, you may be able to claim public transportation expenses that you paid, such as the cost of taking a taxi, bus, or train. Where public transportation is not readily available, you may be able to claim vehicle expenses as well. If you had to travel at least 80 kilometers one way from your home to get medical services, you may be able to uh, claim accommodations, meals, and parking expenses in addition to your transportation expenses. So these expenses may include costs for traveling outside of Canada as well. For accommodations, you must keep receipts for related expenses and must be able to show that the amount paid for accommodations is necessary because the distance traveled and your medical condition. You can claim the transportation and travel expenses for an attendant as well. To claim a medical practitioner, uh, must certify in writing that you were not able to travel alone to get those medical services. So if it's less than, uh, so if it's 40 kilometers one way, but less than 80 kilometers, then you can only claim uh, vehicle and meal expenses. But if it's more than 80 kilometers one way, then you can also claim accommodations and uh, transportation, ex uh, transportation expenses and parking expenses. To claim meal and vehicle expenses, you can choose one of the two methods, the detailed method or the simplified method. If you choose the detailed method, you must keep your receipts and claim the actual amounts that you spent. If you choose a simplified method, uh, claiming in Canadian or US funds, a flat rate of $23 per meal to a maximum of $69 per day per person without receipts. Although you do not need to keep detailed receipts for expenses with this method, you, we may still ask you to provide some documentation to support your claim, um, if, uh, such as like uh, appointment notifications, a letter from the doctor that you had an appointment at this location, or that you had to go to this location to um, get the services that you needed.
You can claim eligible medical expenses by following the steps in your tax software when you're filling it out online. If you're filling on paper, make sure you, you can make the claim on line 33099 or line 33199 of step five of your income tax and benefit return. You can compare the amounts that you can claim with the amounts that your spouse or common law partner can claim. It may be better for the person with the lower net income to make that claim, but that's your decision. So you can claim um, either on your return or your spouse or common law partner's return. So did you know that you can claim renovation expenses that you paid to make your home more accessible? You may be able to claim the home accessibility tax credit if you own a home in Canada and you paid for eligible renovations to improve the safety or the accessibility of the home for yourself or another eligible individual. You can claim up to $20,000 in each year in eligible expenses. This can result in a tax credit of up to $3,000. You may be eligible for this credit if you're 65 or older or if you qualify for the disability tax credit. Or you may claim uh, for a dependent if certain criteria are met. The renovations must be for the main residence of the qualifying person, and they must either be a permanent part of the home and allow the person to access the home or be, mo or be mobile or functional within the home, or reduce the risk of harm within the home or in accessing the home. So just as an example, something that you can claim is um, say you have a bathtub in your house, but uh, for accessibility reasons, you need a walk-in tub or um, a walk-in shower and the renovation expenses to implement that into your bathroom, you can claim that as a tax credit on your taxes, or you can claim the expenses as a tax credit on your taxes. Uh, that's just an example. There are a variety of other reasons why you uh, why, why those expenses can be claimed on your tax returns. So let's take a break from all the tax talk and shift gears on how good the government of Canada can help you save for long-term costs. A registered disability savings plan, or RDSP for short, is intended to help parents and others save for the long-term financial security of a person who is eligible for the disability tax credit. Contributions to an RDSP can be made until the end of the year in which the beneficiary turns 59. The government will pay a matching grant of between 100% to 300% into the RDSP, depending on the beneficiary's adjusted family net income and the amounts contributed. An RDSP can get a maximum of $3,500 in matching grants in one year, and up to $70,000 over the beneficiary's lifetime. And for low and modest income Canadians, the Government of Canada will also pay into the RDSP with the Canada Disabilities Savings Bond of up to $1,000 per year to a maximum of $20,000 over the beneficiary's lifetime. And for the Canada Savings Bond, no personal contributions have to be made to get that bond. So you can get this money if you have an RDSP account and if you're a low income, or a low and modest income, the government will put money into that account. So again, even if you have low income and you may think that disability tax credit is not beneficial for you for your taxes, I still encourage that you apply because you'll be able to take benefits of something like the Canada Savings Bond. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention here is both the grants and the bond are administered by Employment and Social Development Canada. And if you have more, uh, if you have any questions that you want to ask specifically about the RDSP, um, you would have to call them, um, which is ESDC, which is Employment and Social Development Canada. So another government program that can help you with your long-term planning is the Home Buyers Plan. The Home Buyers Plan, or HBP, is a program that allows you to withdraw from your registered retirement savings plan to buy or build a qualifying home for yourself or for a related person with a disability. The home buyers plan allow you to pay back within uh, pay back the withdrawn funds within a 15 year period. You can withdraw from more than one RRSP as long as you're the owner of each RRSP. Your RRSP issuer will not withhold tax on the withdrawn amount that's $35,000 or less. Certain conditions must be met in order to be eligible to participate in the home buyer plan. So you must be considered a first-time home buyer, 
But if you have a disability, if you are a person with disabilities um, and have a disability tax credit with the CRA, then uh, you don't actually have to be a first time home buyer plan. You must have a written agreement to buy or build a qualifying home either for yourself or for a related person with a disability. You must be a resident of Canada when you withdraw funds from your RRSP under the home buyer's plan and up, and up to the time a qualifying home is bought or built. You must intend to occupy the qualifying home as your principal place of residence within one year of buying it or building it. If you buy or build a qualifying home for a related person with a disability or help a related person with a disability to buy or build a qualifying home, the individual with a disability must use and consider that home as their principal place of residence. So the goods and services tax credit or the harmonized sales tax credit, which is the GST HST credit, help those with low and modest income offset the tax that they pay on goods and services. It may provide an individual up to $467 and, and an eligible couple with two children up to $934 per year. So again, these amounts that you see on your screen are federal amounts. There are provincial uh, credits that are paid along with the GST HST credit. Payments are sent out four times a year if you've done your taxes on time. Doing your taxes late can affect your payments. The first payment is paid out on um, uh, July 5th, and then it follows on October, January, and April. Recently, the Government of Canada has approved new financial support measures to make the cost of living more affordable for Canadians. They introduced a one-time uh, GST credit payment that we sent out on November 4th. Um, they also introduced the Canada Dental Benefit, and they have also introduced a one-time top-up to the housing benefit. So before I give you more information on all, all three of them, here is what you need to have in order to qualify or apply for these credits. You must have your 2021 tax return filed. Uh, 2021 net income is used to determine your eligibility for those credits. Sign up for your CRA My Account if you haven't already. Um, this is the fastest way for you to apply for these benefits is online. Sign up for direct deposit. It will be the fastest way for you to get your money. You can get it as quick as five business days. And lastly, make sure your personal information is updated. This is important if your marital status has been updated or uh, because it will affect your family net income. If your address has been updated, please update that before you apply. If CRA gets a returned mail flag on the system, all payments stop going out uh, before that's fixed. So please update your address. So I've already talked to you about the GST HST credit previously. These are the payment amounts that you would have gotten normally. Um, but in addition to support those that are affected by inflation, the government recently doubled the GST HST credit for six months. Here is an example of a single parent with one child that have a net income of $30,000. So you see their normal payments going out on July, October, January, and April. Um, with the uh, doubling of the GST, this individual would have gotten an additional payment on November 4th of $386. This means that this person in total would have gotten $1,160 for GST HST credit for the year. I'm just going to show you one more example, and this is of a senior that's living alone with a net income of $20,000. Um, you see their normal GST payments in July, October, January, and April with their additional payment of $233.50. And this person would have gotten a total of $701 in GST HST credit. So if you haven't filed your 2021 return, you can still get these payments um, yourself. So please apply, but if you, uh, or please file your taxes. If you've already filed your taxes and did not receive the November 4th payment uh, and you've received the, all the other four, please contact us. So the government has launched the new Interim Canada Dental Benefit. This benefit provides financial support for families who have an adjusted family net income of less than $90,000 and have out-of-pocket dental care expenses for their children under 12. So if you are a parent or a guardian of eligible children under 12 years old, you will have to attest that your child does not have access to private dental insurance and your child's dental costs are not fully covered by another dental program provided by any level of the government. 
In order to apply, remember that you need to be receiving the Canada Child Benefit for your child and to have filed your 2021 tax return. Also remember that you must keep your receipts or records uh, from your dental appointment for up to six years. At this time, there are two benefit periods for the interim Canada Dental Benefit. The first period, your child must be born or on or after December 2nd, 2010. Your child must receive dental care services in Canada between October 1st, 2022 to December, uh, June 30th of 2023. And this application is launched on December 1st of last year, so you can apply for the first period now. The second period is gonna launch on July 1st of 2023, so uh, you can apply for that then, but the second period will cover the expenses from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th of 2024. Depending on your net income, your non-taxable Canada dental benefit payment could be as high as $650 per child per benefit period. So that would mean a total of $1,200 for the two periods. Um, and it, it varies depending on your net income as shown in the table here. There are two ways for you to apply for this benefit. The first is the CRA My Account. Um, you can apply online. And the second is via phone. The phone number that you see here is 1-800-715-8836. It's a dedicated phone line for the Canada Dental Benefit. And they'll be able to answer any questions in regards to this benefit over the phone and, um, and uh, apply for your applications over the phone as well. I swear I'm almost done. This is the last benefit that I have on my screen here. It's the one-time top-up to the housing benefit. So this um, is a one-time payment of $500. It is also non-taxable to assist low-income renters that are 15 years of age or older. This benefit is available to renters who have an adjusted net income of 2021 of $35,000 or less for families or $20,000 or less for individuals. And you have paid at least 30% of your 2021 family net income on rent in 2022 for their own principal residence in Canada. And you can provide your landlord's contact information. So if you weren't listening and you're listening now, I highly encourage that you apply for this because this there's only two days left to apply for this benefit and then it will go away and they are not going to take any more applications. So the last day to apply for this benefit is March 31st of this year, which is just in two days. So if you qualify based on this criteria, please apply ASAP. There are three ways to apply. You can apply to the CRMI account if you've already registered. You can apply via phone at 1-800-282-8079. Again, this is a separate phone line and it's only for the housing benefit. And there's an online web form as well. So if you go onto the link that's on your screen, um, you can apply online using that web form if you don't have a CRA My account. So again, I can't stress this enough. It's going to go away after two days. So please apply if you qualify. So I've talked about a lot of benefits um, over the slide deck, and there might be a lot more that you may qualify for that I didn't discuss. So there's a tool called Benefits Finder. It finds not only federal benefits that you might be eligible for, but also provincial benefits. So it'll ask you a series of questions based on you, your own personal criteria. You can find all of the ones that you can apply for. So I highly encourage that you check it out and answer as much as possible on those questions. That way it will find a dedicated list that's, uh, that's for you. The second link that's on there is the Child Family Benefit Calculator. That will provide the amounts that you can get for the benefits that you apply for with the CRA, for example, the Canada Workers Benefit or the Canada Child Benefit. That will give you the numbers that you can get for the total of the year. So the first will find the benefits, the second will tell you the amounts. So I'm gonna move on to the CRA services and tools and um, the services that we have to offer to make taxes a little bit more easier for you. So the first is the autofill my return. If you are filling out your tax returns electronically and you have a CRA My account, the autofill my return will pull all the information from your CRA My account, put it in the software that you're using, and you will just simply have to review your taxes and submit. So it makes filing a lot more easier. Direct deposit, it is the fastest and most convenient way for you to get your money instead of having to wait for uh, check in the mail and mail delays, it will be deposited right into your account. 
express notice of assessment. Uh, once you use a tax software to file your taxes online, uh, an express notice of assessment will automatically right away tell you the total amount of refund that you're getting or the amount that you may owe. Email notifications. This is a secure uh, a CRA way. It's as a as a prevention for fraud, you will get an email notification indicating that when your address has been changed or when your representative has been changed, it won't give you any links to click on. It will just simply say, hey, the information has been updated. Please log into your CRI My account to view that information. And if you didn't change that information, call us. Refile and change my return. They both kind of go hand in hand. Say that you've made a mistake on your taxes or you forgot to claim a, a credit, you can go back and adjust your taxes. With the refile, you can simply refile that whole return. Or with the change my return, you do need to have a CRA My account already. And you can add a line on the taxes or edit the line on the taxes for that particular year. So for example, you apply for the disability tax credit. Um, you can just simply go back to your tax return and add the disability tax credit on your return online. Submit documents. Um, instead of having to mail your documents, you can simply either take really clear pictures or scan your documents and submit them electronically. Saves money um, on mailing them to us. And my payment is a secure way for you to make your payments to the CRA. You may get a lot of scam calls saying you owe money to the CRA, but my payments is a secure online way for you to make your payments directly to the CRA in case you owe money. We have my account. I've talked about my account multiple different times during the course of the presentation. It is literally having all of your tax information available on your fingertips. You'll have your notice of assessments. You'll have your uh, T4 slips that you need to file your taxes. You can change your return. Um, you can also check uncashed checks online. If you've ever received a check from the CRA and you've forgotten to cash it, I'll have a list it on there. I haven't been so lucky myself. I don't have any uncashed checks, but you may. So if you have uh, registered for the CRA My Account, you can check online to see if you have any uncashed checks. And the Government of Canada checks actually never scale date, so you can go and cash it anytime. And a fun fact I guess I'll give you is the oldest check that we have that somebody hasn't cashed yet is from 1998. So if it's hiding in your software, please go find it and cache it. <clears throat> um, so I've talked about the benefits and credit payments. So doing your taxes is key to getting many of the benefits and credits that we talked about, like the GST, the Canada Workers Benefit. The CRA uses information from your tax return to calculate the benefits and credits that you're entitled to. To get your benefits payments, you and your spouse or common law partner have to do your taxes every year. Even if you did not make any money during the year or your income was tax exempt, we need to know that information. You have until uh, April 30th every year to do your taxes uh, for the previous calendar year. So we follow taxes from January 1st to December 31st and you must file them by the end of the year. So you have about a month and two days uh, for you to file your 2022 tax returns. Uh, so I'm hoping I've given you some information that you can use some of these credits and apply to them on your own tax returns to take the benefits. There are a few ways for you to do your taxes. We have free tax credits. So we partner with community organizations um, and they, some of the free tax credits are virtual and are in person as well. Um, if you go to canada.ca slash get tax help, you can find a tax clinic that's near your area and they'll be able to do your taxes for free. Um, you can also use tax service providers. These would be, for an example, an accountant. Um, they may charge you a fee to do your taxes. Uh, there are net file softwares. Uh, these are some are free, some are also charged. So if you go to Canada.ca slash net file, you, uh, you can find a certified software online and it will tell you if it's going to cost you or if it's going to be free. So you can do your taxes uh, online yourself. Um, if you have low or fixed income, you may be able to use File My Return. It's a service that lets you file your taxes by answering a series of short questions. Um, if you're eligible to use this service, CRA will send you a letter, but there's only like very handful of people that we actually send this out to. If you use File My Return, it just simply asks a question, and I actually don't know it, how to use this. It's on the letter that gets sent to that particular person with a pen and the phone number. And last but not least, you can file your taxes by paper. So you can download the tax package from our website or you can call us and we'll mail one to you. And you can um, simply fill out everything yourself by hand, uh, attach your documents with it and mail it to us.
So as I mentioned, you may be able to get your taxes done by a volunteer for free. You're eligible for the service if you have modest income and a simple tax situation. So modest income is if you have income less than $35,000 for a single person or like $45,000 for a couple. Your tax situation is simple if you don't have a small business or income from a rental property. So if it's, if it's just you and you have few of your slips and few of your medical expenses, you can take it to them and they'll do it for you for free. Most of the tax clinics are offered in March and April. So if you go online, you'll find lots of them right now. And there again, there are some virtual ones as well. So if you can't find uh, availability for the one that's near you, you can find a virtual clinic and someone over a Zoom call or MS Teams will be able to help you. So um, we have something called the liaison service. So I'm here to provide you information on a personal income tax return. But if you have a small business, um, you can go through a liaison officer service. You can request for it. It's free as well. They provide information if you are self-employed or have anything in relation to business expenses or business-related questions. So you can definitely um, ask for their service if you, if you fall under that category. So we're kind of running out of time and I do want to answer your questions if you have any. So I'm going to skip, uh, not skip, but I'm going to skim over uh, some of the uh, information in regards to scams. It is my last topic for that presentation. So I'm just going to give you some pointers on what to expect if the CRA contacts you and how to understand and record different types of scams. So last year in 2022, um, on average, 100 Canadians fall victim to scams per day. This is why we include this information in all of our presentation. You may think it's easier to recognize when it's a scam or if it's an automated call, it's not the CRA. But, you know, they invent new scams every single day. Even my brother-in-law, he got a call saying, oh, we'll fill out a Nexus application for $500. Um, those of you that have applied for a Nexus, you know, it only costs $50 and it's a pretty simple application to do. And, you know, he himself was able to get, provide all that information. So they invent new scams every single day. So be, please be careful who you're giving your information out to. The CRA um, does contact Canadians, uh, but sometimes scammers imitate us. They may either text you, call you, email you, or send you a mail. If they're asking for um, personal information, such as your credit card numbers, bank account, or passport numbers, please be careful because we won't ask you for any of those three information. Unless you, um, the only time that we will ask for a bank account number is if you're trying to set up a direct deposit with us. That way we'll need your account number to uh, be able to send you uh, money through direct deposit. But otherwise, we won't ask for any of the three. We don't take any payments over the phone as well. So there, there will never be a chance that we ask for your credit card numbers. Um, these are some signs of fraudulent communications. If they're demanding immediate payments via car, uh, credit cards or Bitcoin or gift cards, if they say that we're gonna, uh, police is coming or they're uh, threatening you deportation, these are just signs of fraudulation, fraud, fraudulate, fraudulation, and CRA will never say the police is coming. We will ne never send, uh, never say uh, threaten you with deportation or any of that sort. The only time the CRA will call you is if you owe money to a government program, a collection officer may call you to discuss your file and ask you to make a payment. If the CRA has questions about your tax and benefit records or the documents that you've sent us, a CRA officer may call you for more information. When the CRA calls you, they may verify your identity by asking personal information, such as your full name, your date of birth, your address, and your social insurance number. If you're ever uh, afraid it's not the CRA, you can call our general inquiries line and ask them, hey, somebody from CRA called me. Is this actually a CRA agent? We'll be able to verify that for you. And once it's verified, you can call that agent back and give them the information that's requested. So another signs of fraudulent email communications, if an email that give, ask you for your personal information, we will never ask you to confirm your social insurance number. We will never ask you to send anything back in an email to us. Um, if you receive a text message or email with a refund, it is a scam. CRA only sends you either direct deposit or uh, a mail in the chat. We never send in track e transfers as your refund. Any um, any email that says to fill out a form or links, it's never us. Ask yourself the questions before you give out that information. Ask if it's 
it, it does it look legit if it has a lot of spelling mistakes and it has a lot of errors it most likely is a scam if you're ever in doubt just delete it and you can always check your CRMI account to verify that information as well and just last year in 2022 we lost a total of 530 million dollars to frauds and scams so you may think it might be easy for you to get your money back, but once the money is gone, it is very hard to retrieve it. So please, please, please be vigilant when you give out your personal information. You can report a scam to the Anti-Fraud Center online at the web address on your screen or by calling 1-888-495-8501. If you suspect that you may be a victim of fraud, you can please contact your local police service. And that's all I have. Thank you so much for um, paying attention and listening to my uh, presentation. I hope by giving you some information that you can use for your own personal taxes um, and benefit from the benefits and credits that are available to you. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I do see some from the chat here. So I'm just going to stop sharing so you can see them. Um, someone asked if they can receive the slideshow after. I think um, Terry is recording the presentation. So you can ask her for that recording. Manisha, can you um, also send me the file like in a PDF or something like that? So that uh, the yeah, I can, I, can send, yeah. I can send you the slide deck in a PDF again, just um, the information changes so often. Yeah. Uh, so please only just send it to the participants. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, with the disability tax credit, do you have to renew, reapply after so many years? So it depends on your notice of determination. If your um, disability tax credit notice of determination shows the end date, then you have to apply after that date. Uh, it would have like an end year. But if it doesn't, then you don't have to reapply. It's only one time. Sorry, just on that note, um, that was interesting. Uh, being, I, I have that. I've never even known about the end date. Where do we find out if there, if our form has an end date? Um, you can actually check on your CRA My Account as well. If you have a disability tax credit on there, um, it'll, it'll say if it does not have an end date, then it doesn't expire. But if it has an end date, um, do you see where it says the qualifying date, like the year that it you you qualified for it? Um, if it does not have an end date right beside it, that means uh, you qualify for it for permanently. Perfect. Thanks. Um, can my sister claim the transportation cost as I cannot drive and there is no public transportation? Um, transportation cost for medical expenses. If you are traveling more than 40 kilometers, um, then yes, you, you can claim the transportation costs. I missed the section on attendant care. Someone came to the door. Um, if you have any questions in particular to attendant care, I can answer that. But attendant care, if you have expenses, you can claim them as medical expenses on your tax return, um, as long as you have a disability tax credit with the CRA. Is there still a gas tax reimbursement or is that provincial? Uh, I think you're referring to the climate action incentive, that's provincial. Would replacing carpet with vinyl planks qualify for the home accessibility tax credit? Challenging to move on carpet with a wheelchair. Um, yes. So if it's uh, uh, getting you to be more mobile in the home, um, then since you can't uh, um, move around with a wheelchair on a carpet, then if you're moving and applying hardwood floors, you can claim that expense. As long as either you're 65 years or old, or you have a disability tax credit with the CRA, then you can claim that expense. Um, I was late, how do I listen to the recording? How do I get a copy of the presentation? Please get in touch with Terry and she'll be able to assist you with that. Can one claim both medical expenses and caregiver expenses or just one of them? You can claim both. So if you have medical expenses and care and, and you can also claim the caregiver credit on your taxes. Uh, Marnie has her hand up there. Go ahead, Marnie. Um, I was wondering about that disability supplement. Um, like, I guess if you qualify for the DTC, you can apply for that? Or... Um, yeah, so the disability supplement is with the Canada's workers benefit. And if you qualify for the Canada workers benefit, then yes, you will get the disability supplement. 
And in order to qualify for the Canada Workers Benefit, you need to be either 19 years of age or older, and you need to have some working income. So is, is that the like the, the tax form you fill out when you have a job on the federal and there's a line for disability? Is that that's what the supplement is or is this something separate? Uh, the Canada Workers Benefit Disability Supplement is separate than okay. the disability tax credit. Um, I can't remember the line number on top of my head, but I can look it up for you. I think it's line 45300 is where you claim it. It is a refundable tax credit. So it, it gives extra money back if you have used it to reduce a tax payable to $0. Um, the disability supplement is added on to that line 45300. Probably so you if can, I check, I do the software, the online Yeah, the software okay, automatically, okay. yeah, the software automatically calculates it for you. But if you're filling it out on paper, you need to attach a schedule six with it. Um, just the other thing about replacing the carpet with the vinyl planking, does that cover labor and the materials? Do you know? Um, there are, if, are you going, going to be doing your own labor? It no, I have to hire someone. Yeah. So if you hire someone, then yes, uh, but it doesn't cover the cost of your own labor, but it will cover the materials. But if you and hire someone, then it will also cost, uh, cover that. Thank you. And the max, ma maximum expenses that you can claim is $20,000 per year. Thank you. And I believe there actually is a federal gas excise tax credit uh, still available. And there's one through the BC government as well. The climate, I, I'm not sure what the gas, I think you're referring to the climate action incentive. The federal one does not apply to BC. The provincial BC one applies. Uh, the federal one, there's only three provinces that qualify for it. Um, I don't think it's the climate control one that I fill in for. It's a provincial thing. It's separate of that. Okay. If it's provincial, I'm, I might not be aware. I only know about the federal benefits and credits. I'm yeah, sorry. It's provincial. I ha go. make so little, I don't able to claim anything. Um, I make 16000 and so when I, my non-refundable, there's nothing. It ends up because I have the, the, the disability tax credit, but when it comes to deducting, there's nothing there, right? Um, I'm, I'm really sorry, but if you are renting, then you can claim the one time top up to the housing benefit. Yeah, I am going to do that. <laughs> and um, your disability tax credit, if there is someone that's supporting you, you can transfer it to them so that it, it will help with their tax. They're not supporting me. Oh. Yeah, there's money on the side there. <laughs> See, that's the problem. So it's going to be a problem until I'm 65 then. Right? Until I hit 65 when I when all my income starts to show up uh yeah if you want to then you can use all, all of the non-refundable tax credit yes um you can still qualify i don't know if you work or not but if i you don't work, okay i'm on on cpp disability oh i see yeah um i and i'm on the max see the thing is i'm max i'm on the maximum cpp disability so i not a, i i'm too much money for pits first for the provincial so i don't qualify for the provincial disability so i have to support myself and my sister obviously won't do that right <laughs> and that's why i asked about this my sister driving me and deducting it yeah she uh she can she can possibly even claim the caregiver credit for you. She could. She possibly could. I'm I'm not sure to the extent that she supports but you. But she doesn't but... help me very much. That's the thing. Yeah. So it's really she supports me in a sense of morally, but not financially. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Alexis and Marnie for putting that. All right. So go. They can someone else anyway thanks for your Julia help. you got your hand up there we'll take this as the last question thank you 
Um, I was wondering because I am using the wheelchair, but the our house is very old house. Um, the wheelchair cannot go upstairs. So if I do a stair lift, it's very expensive. I wonder, um, is there stair lift can be, um, can be, uh, can can that be disability expense for the income tax purpose or how do yeah. I? Yes, you can claim um, the stair lift. At, it, it's just called a home accessibility tax credit. That's where you would claim it. Oh, another question. Because the, the our house is too old, I don't think they are proper. Uh, the wall is not properly uh, insulated. So it's very cold. Every, uh, every winter is very cold. So I was wondering if we if we get somebody come to, because the to do a new house is too expensive. If we get somebody to do the insulation for the wall, would it be okay to claim as the disability expense too, or? Um, I'm not 100% certain in that situation because it has to be either be able to access or be more mobile in that home. Um, so if it doesn't allow that, like, so for example, say like if there was like a leak or something like that on like in your roof, then yes, because then there is a safety uh, hazard. Um, I would recommend calling the general inquiries line and asking them your case specific question. Oh, did you mention the leak? Because our roof has been leaking a couple of times already. Yeah. So like, again, like if it causes like, for example, molds and leaks, and, and again, it, it would affect the access to the home um, or be able to live in that home, then yes, you can claim it as an expense. Oh really? I oh, 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 oh I didn't know that. But 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 uh, uh but do they have to be this year or is previous year okay or I mean two years ago is okay or have to be the current? Um so you can go back and adjust your taxes for previous years, but they are based on an annual tax return basis. So January first to December thirty first. Uh, just to let you know, um, 2022 and onwards is $20,000 in expenses. Before 2022, it used to be only $10,000 in expenses. So if you had done expenses before, and keep in mind, the home accessibility tax credit can only be claimed if you're 65 or older, or if you have the disability tax credit on file with the CRA, then you can go back and adjust your taxes for that particular year and claim them and you, you'll get your money back. You can adjust your taxes up to 10 previous year, or nine previous years. Okay, thank you so much. Hey, Terry, I'm, I'm not sure how to how to put my hand down. Can you do it for me? <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We're going to finish up now. And thank you thank so you much, much. Manuja. That was really interesting information. I will um, hopefully get your presentation slides in a PDF and just send them out to everybody along with a link. Um, but just so you know, probably, as Manuja said, it's um, will not last like it will be expired the information fairly soon. So uh, hopefully, um, yeah, it'll, the link won't last forever. It'll probably just be around for about a week or so. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Harry. Thank you so much. Bye.